Hi and welcome, I'm Glenn. You are going to want to see this tutorial. There's a wonderful group of Year 7 students who are designing their own glider shapes and then using a laser cutter to create and fly their own balsa gliders. So can I give a massive shout out to the students and staff at Cranbrook in Sydney. Thanks for the request. No doubt there's some aerospace engineers of the future at Cranbrook. Don't start drawing just yet. Let's have a look at something more familiar to you and that is a side view. This grid is five units across and one unit high. Looks simple, but our task is going to be to try and draw this in 3D, in isometric. Now sketch the design for your aircraft into this side view grid. Great, let's go. Here's your starting point. Come across 70 millimeters and then up 20 millimeters. That's the starting point. We'll put the splat on that. We're not drawing a whole cube, just one face. Good, that was easy. Now take a ruler, place it on that line and then extend it all the way across your page. I'd use a really light line. I'm drawing a little darker so that you can see it. Uh, now we're going to use the length of the splat to mark off four more boxes. Three, four, and to finish up with five. Hang on, I better just check that. Looks good. Let's trim the line on the end. And then we'll use a ruler to complete the top of all the boxes. So we're going to connect those two points. Boom, great. To get you started with a really easy design, let's curve the front. I'm placing the splat back in the very original position and tracing lightly in that ellipse. Guess where the centre of that ellipse would be and then erase the back half of it. So we've got half an ellipse facing the front of the aircraft. Now gently blend a line from the ellipse to the top of the grid and do the same thing on the bottom. You could modify this shape to suit yourself. Remember, I'm going with a really basic design. Now at the bottom, I'm going to keep on going around and find a point at the back there. We want less weight at the back. So let's chop a bit of weight out there. Let's even halve that again. So I'm starting off my planning with a straight line. Even though straight lines aren't very strong in aircraft, they rely on all the curves. Now we can come back and curve it in a little more. The body of an aircraft is called a fuselage. We need a nice big curve in the bottom of the fuselage. So we're going to flex a ruler. The trick is how can we hold it in place? If you're drawing on your own, find something heavy, flex the ruler with one hand, and then trace off. I'd like you to make two marks, halfway up the front, halfway up the back. Join those with a light line, and that is your centre line. Let's make the top of the fuselage look 3D. So we're going to copy that line and slide it in that direction, the left splat direction. And when I do that, suddenly you can see the 3D effect appearing. Watch this really closely. I'm beginning and ending with an isometric line. So let's mark those in. Maybe three millimeters thick, depends on your balsa. Then I'm going to copy that straight line and stop where it starts to curve. Now it's a case of offsetting or copying that line and joining it on. This is a bubble canopy. You could design your own shape canopy, of course. Here's a really simple one for you. And just like the fuselage, it starts and ends with an isometric line. Do you remember the center line that we drew earlier? That's it there. There's the symbol for a center line, a C with an L through it. Hey, let's review your three isometric line angles, and that's them. Now the wing is going to be on one of those angles. This is the next thing we need to draw. It's the front of the wing, called the leading edge. I've picked a point on the center line to start the wing. That point is about one and a half units back from the front of the aircraft. Let's try and draw this uh, leading edge in. So from that point, what I did was take the splat straight up and down and from that point draw an isometric line out and that sets my angle of the leading edge. Then I lined up 
my ruler with it and extended it forwards and hop over the fuselage and backwards. Just make that a long line as long as you can at this stage. Great, now I'm going to come from that point 120 millimeters out and I'm going to go from that same point 120 on the far side. So we're constructing our drawing here. The wing tip will be on my isometry angle as well. Same thing on the far wing tip. So we're drawing to start off with, this is basically a plank of balsa. Have a look where the wing joins onto the fuselage. That will be a curved line on top. That's an airfoil section that creates lift. It looks like I've got a little bit of erasing to do there. And now it's starting to look like an aircraft. Let's pause for a second and look from the top. There's the wing shape as seen from above. Often on aircraft, the wings get thicker as they join onto the fuselage. As types of aircraft get faster and faster, often the leading edge is swept backwards like that. An elliptical wing is a fairly good um, performer, but hard to make. On this glider, we're simply going to round the wing tips. We're picking a new point where the back of the wing or the trailing edge is going to join to the fuselage. I'm picking a spot right there, still on the center line, and I'm joining it to the wing tip with a ruler. We're going to do the same thing on the far side. From that point, I'm joining to the wing tip. Just make sure you hop over the fuselage. Each wing tip is really a quarter of a circle. Let's draw a circle in isometric and divide it into four equal pieces. This wing tip really is just a quarter of a circle. And this wing tip is that quarter of a circle. Notice how the curves are different. Here's how to draw the curved wing tips. We'll go one unit to the right and one unit to the left. And then we'll blend a line in that meets those two points. All right, now let's do the same thing on the other side. We'll come one unit this way. Remember I showed you this is a much tighter curve on this wing tip. It goes further into the corner. The flat part we're drawing at the back of the tail plane is called the horizontal stabilizer. Line up the corner of the splat, just like I'm showing you here on the screen, and then draw in an isometric line. We're going to extend that line. Come forwards now to the next line on the grid, pick a spot, and do exactly the same thing. So we've drawn a horizontal stabilizer where the leading edge and the trailing edge are parallel. We'll complete that rectangular shape by drawing another isometric line. Oh, that's really cool. We've got a little bit more erasing to do there. And that is a very simple horizontal stabilizer. Let's sweep the leading edge of it back a little bit. So I'm going to join that center point to both of those on the tips. Let's talk about the vertical stabilizer. Here's a basic square shape. I also could use a much more curved shape, a little bit more aerodynamic, but I also could look at where I attach it. I could use a shape and slide it backwards. I could taper it, that means it gets more slender as it goes up. I could also add little strengthening parts. And you've drawn the stabilizers. Have you ever noticed the little lines on these stabilizers? How there's little parts that move? They serve to deflect the air upwards or downwards as the pilot moves the controls. And that changes the way the airplane's pointed up or down. They're called elevators. Here I'm constructing a vertical surface as a guide to draw in my vertical stabilizer. So there's a square shape. I'm designing the shape of my stabilizer now. I'm tapering the top of it a little. Looks good. Now we're so used to seeing things in perspective, that far wing looks longer than the one in front. So I'm going to fudge it. I'm actually going to shorten it a bit to make it look as though they're the same length. At the front of a glider, you'll often find a small weight or mass. It can be made from plasticine or a paper clip, anything, but it's really important in um, stable flight. 
when you throw your glider, launch it into the air, a tremendous lift is created by the wings, and that tends to pitch or point the plane up. And so we need a small mass to balance that and keep it flying level. And that means that it's gliding. That's great. But what about when the aircraft starts to slow down, there's less lift. But the weight hasn't changed, and so the weight makes it point downwards, and in doing so, it picks up speed again and begins flying, or it continues to glide. Let's talk a little bit about aeronautics. In this situation, imagine the red represents the fuselage, or the centre line. And the wing and the stabiliser are both parallel to that. Now, when the plane's stationary, the air particles are all around, like this. But as the aircraft starts moving forwards, either by an elastic band or being thrown, then the air particles start rushing past. And we're going to represent those air particles with these lines that I've drawn on the plastic. So imagine as the glider is moving forwards, the air is flowing past it like this. What about if for some reason the glider starts to pitch up like that? Well, if the air is still moving past it in the same direction, then as the air hits the stabiliser at the back, that will tend to line up with the airstream and keep the plane flying forwards and stable. Uh, what about as the aircraft slows down? When it slows down, there's not so much air flowing past it. And if you have a weight at the front of your glider, then that weight force will tend to bring the glider pitched down. The only disadvantage to this type of arrangement is that the lift from the wing doesn't give the glider very much lift, and it's hard for it to overcome the weight on the glider. In this second situation, you can see that the angle of the rear stabiliser is pointed slightly down, and it has this effect. As the aircraft is launched, the rear stabiliser tends to line itself up with the angle of airflow. And that's good, because now the wing is pointed slightly up in the air. That's called angle of attack. And as it does so, it increases the lift on the aircraft. The downside to this arrangement is that, remember, the aircraft is still moving in the direction of the air. And as it does so, the angle of the fuselage is creating a little drag because the aircraft body or fuselage is moving like this through the air. In this third situation, we have the stabiliser parallel with the centre line of the fuselage and we've angled slightly the wings up. About 7 degrees works fairly well. And this is so common, they call it the rigger's angle. So we have the best of both worlds. Now the fuselage can travel like this through the airstream without causing too much drag. The rear stabiliser will keep it pointed like that into the air. And the wing lifted up to a slight angle of attack because of this rigger's angle will generate more lift. So this is the way to go. If the aircraft has too much weight on the nose, however, it'll tend to fly up and then stall, and then it'll dip down. When it builds up enough speed, it'll begin to fly again. And the flight path will be a series of loops like that. Hey, the good news is you don't need to be an expert to have an awesome glider. It's a case of suck it and see. That means throw your glider, watch what happens, and then make some trimming or some adjustment. Um, thank you again, Cranbrook, for this suggestion. I've had a great time with this tutorial, and I would love to see some more of your planes flying. Thanks, guys. Bye.